you know, luxury living it used to be all about like penthouse views, right? Maybe a rooftop terrace if you were lucky. But things are changing, and I think for the better, this whole new idea of luxury is emerging. And we're seeing it play out in some pretty cool ways. So today, we're diving into this idea. It's like, imagine stepping out of your super sleek, modern condo right in the city. But instead of concrete, you're met with this, like, lush, like having your own little oasis. Exactly. A personal patch of nature right in the heart of the city. That's what we're talking about today. It's interesting because it really does seem like people are starting to prioritize that outdoor space now more than ever. Even when we're talking about like, you know, these urban con. I think it's not just a nice to have anymore. It's a must have. It's a really interesting shift. Absolutely. And that's exactly what our source, the new trend in outdoor living is highlighting. How interesting. They're showcasing this development, the Gallery Sarasota, eh, that really embodies this whole new approach to luxury. Okay, cool. And they're saying, forget balconies. We're talking private courtyards full-on backyards, but in the city. Wow. It makes you wonder, like, why is this happening now? And I think you can't underestimate the impact of the pandemic, right? Right. We all kind of went through this collective craving for nature, for fresh air, for a sense of escape. That desire to just be connected to the natural world, it's never been stronger. Totally. And when you add in this rise of remote work, having that dedicated outdoor space, it becomes even more appealing. No, it's, it's not just a luxury. It's like a way to enhance your life. You know, like I can work outside. I can have a quiet cup of coffee or even have a dinner party under the stars. And I think that's what the developer was getting at when they talked about wanting to reconnect residents with nature. Oh, they said that. Yeah. They were saying that's a huge selling point for them. I bet. It's brilliant. Speaking of a gallery, Sarasota, they have this private courtyard collection and wow. Is it impressive? Oh, tell me more about it. Okay, so picture this. Over 600 square feet of your own private outdoor space. And we're talking decking, we're talking native trees, multiple lounging areas. It sounds amazing. That's not just an afterthought. It's designed to be a true extension of your living space. That makes sense given what you're saying about it being a must-have now. People don't want just a patch of grass. Right, exactly. They want something more thoughtful, more like livable. Yes. Yeah. It really is like they're going above and beyond. Right, visually. And it makes you think, is this really just a trend? Or are we seeing a fundamental change in how people, especially city dwellers, want to live? You know, that's the million dollar question, right? And it goes beyond just real estate, I think. That ties into all these other things we're seeing pop up, like the whole remote work thing, this desire for a more balanced lifestyle. So like people are really reevaluating their priorities. Like, yeah, they still want that city buzz, but they also want a sanctuary, a place to unwind and just reconnect. Yeah. And with so many people working remotely now, that private outdoor space can become an extension of your home office. It's at such a good point. Take a break from the screen, get some fresh air, you know. It's about like blurring the lines a bit. Yeah. Work and leisure. Indoors and outdoors. Exactly. And speaking of blurring lines, the source mentioned how these outdoor spaces are designed for more than just relaxing. They're made for entertaining, too. Oh, interesting. So it's not just about solitary retreats into nature. Right. It's about connection, having friends and family over. I love that. Imagine, like, hosting a weekend brunch in your private courtyard, surrounded by all that greenery. Stop. That sounds amazing. It's like an extension of your living space, you know? Yeah, just as inviting and stylish as inside. Totally. And I think it goes beyond just the aesthetics, right? Yeah. It's the feeling you get when you're surrounded by nature, even if it's just a little slice of it in the city. Absolutely. There's something so calming and restorative about it. And it's not just in our heads either. Oh, really? Yeah. There have been actual studies that show spending time in nature can like reduce stress levels, improve your mood, even boost creativity. It's wild. Wow. I believe it though. Our brains probably need that connection to nature. Think so. So it really is more than just a luxury then. It's an investment. Totally. An investment in your well-being. Exactly. Which kind of brings us back to that idea of sustainability. Can we create these urban oases in a way that doesn't put a strain on our resources? Because that's important to consider too. That's the big question, isn't it? And I think it's something developers are really grappling with right now. Yeah. The Gallery Sarasota, for example, they're incorporating sustainable design elements into their project. Like what? 
Well, like using native plants that don't need as much watering, sourcing materials locally whenever possible, things like that. So it's about finding that balance, right? Creating these incredible nature-inspired spaces, but making sure they're environmentally responsible too. It has to be sustainable long-term. 100%. And I don't think it's all on the developers either. Like we as consumers, we have a role to play. So I don't absolutely. Being mindful of the choices we make, supporting companies that prioritize sustainability, you know, it all adds up. It's about quality over quantity. Exactly. And recognizing the value of experiences, not just possessions. That private outdoor space might be smaller than a huge backyard in the suburbs, but it offers something you can't get in a McMansion. It's the best of both worlds. So true. You get that vibrancy and convenience of city living, but with a touch of serenity you get from nature. It's a total game changer. It's exciting to see where this goes from here. Like... What will developers and architects come up with next? I know. It feels like we're just scratching the surface. Imagine, like, vertical gardens built right into buildings, rooftop farms supplying fresh produce to residents. I love that. Or even whole neighborhoods designed with nature as the focus. That would be incredible. It sounds like something out of a movie. I know, right? But it's becoming more and more realistic. That's what makes this so fascinating. It's not just about real estate. It's about completely reimagining how we live, how we work, how we connect with each other and with the natural world. It really feels like we're on the verge of something big, you know, like a total shift in how we think about city living. And it's not just about recreating the suburbs in the middle of downtown. This is different. 100%. It's about bringing together the best of both worlds. And I think what's really cool is that this whole desire for outdoor space, for that connection to nature, it's not limited to luxury development. That's a good point. We're seeing it everywhere. Like even in affordable housing, you see those community gardens popping up, pocket parks, green roofs. It's becoming more mainstream. It's true. It's not just a luxury trend anymore. Exactly. It's becoming a core part of how we design and think about cities in general, making them healthier, more livable for everyone. And that's important, right? It can't just be about adding a few trees here and there. This has to be bigger. You got it. It's about creating an entire ecosystem within the city, one that supports like biodiversity, you know, helps to reduce that urban heat island effect, cleans up the air, right? Right. It's about understanding that we're a part of nature, not separate from it. Totally. And that brings us back to the Gallery Sarasota. Because they're not just building condos with some fancy courtyards, right? Yeah. They're trying to create a community that's truly connected to its environment. Exactly. The source even mentioned they're using a lot of native plants in their landscaping. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, which is great because it means less water, fewer pesticides, and it attracts pollinators, supports local wildlife. Small detail, but it makes a difference. It shows they're thinking about the whole picture, which is cool. And, you know, it, it always amazes me how these small details can actually have a huge impact. For sure. But I think it all comes back to that idea of creating yeah. a sense of place, that feeling of belonging. You know, when you feel connected to your surroundings, when you're surrounded by nature, you just, you care more. 100%. And that's what will lead to lasting change, I think. The sense of stewardship. Exactly. It's not enough to just build beautiful spaces. We have to build spaces that actually inspire people to want to live more sustainably or mindfully. I love that. So to everyone listening, next time you're walking around your city, take a moment to really see those green spaces and, you know, the, those rooftop gardens, the community plots with all the plants and flowers. Yeah, those aren't just pretty additions. They represent a much bigger shift and how we're approaching city living. A future where cities aren't just concrete jungles, but actual thriving ecosystems. And hey, maybe it'll inspire you to create your own little oasis, whether it's a balcony garden, a window box full of herbs. I'll love that. Even just a little corner in your home dedicated to bringing in a bit of nature. Because at the end of the day, that connection with nature, it's not a luxury. It's essential. It's something we should all be striving for wherever we live. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed our presentation. I trust that you or members of your team will be inspired by the options MoneyShot is presenting. Please do not hesitate to call me and ask any questions. And no, I'm not an avatar. Or am I? <laughs>